I have spent the last 30 days of my life using only the Huntsman. Throughout this month, I have wanted to learn how to use the Huntsman to the best of my abilities. Learn as much as I can about the weapon itself and figure out, is it really just a look based weapon? Or is there some actual skill that goes into it? This video was a huge project for me, so if you do go on to enjoy it, a sub would be much appreciated. The Huntsman for me is a weapon I have always wanted to get good at using, if that is even possible, as getting headshots with it across the map seems like one of the most satisfying things you could possibly do in all of TFT. It's a weapon that itself has a very controversial reputation within the TF2 community, and I wanted to try and understand the weapon more to see if that reputation was justified, since every time I seem to have used this item before, I haven't hit anything. I decided I wanted to do this challenge after using the Huntsman for about 20 minutes on a different stream and actually hitting some stuff with it, and I wanted to even try and get a sponsor so I could get a strange Huntsman to use for the challenge, but I didn't have time to try and message any since the second my tweet about the challenge went live, Zenith, who is another TF2 YouTuber, offered to lend me his strange huntsman for the duration of the challenge. Which is just crazy. These things are ridiculously expensive. So without Zenith, this whole video probably wouldn't have happened because I didn't want to track kills after every single game. So a massive thank you to Zenith. His link will be in the description. Make sure you check his channel out. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the stats of the Huntsman since the concept of the weapon is quite simple. You have an arrow, you pull it back, you let it fly. If you hit somebody with it after drawing it all the way back, you do 120 damage. And if you hit someone in the head with it, they die most of the time. Unless you're a max overhealed heavy, but that's okay. I had decided fairly early on in the challenge that I was going to set myself some goals. I knew I wasn't going to be able to consistently play a good amount of TF2 every day for a month. My work schedule and everything else I'm doing just didn't allow it, right? So with that in mind, I wanted to try and get a thousand kills with the Huntsman over the 30 days. This challenge was set assuming that I would actually have trouble getting kills, which is what I expected to happen. Wasn't quite what did happen, but I still wanted to be safe. Another challenge was that over the course of the month at some point, I wanted to get a headshot kill on an invisible spy. I also wanted to get a 360 headshot just because it'd be funny and an insane distance kill, at least one taunt kill, and I also wanted to go on a 10 kill streak. I wanted to say 20, but I didn't want to feel like I failed if I didn't get a godlike, and a 10 kill streak for me is a lot more manageable. So with all of that said, on November 1st, 2023, this was a while ago, I set off on the journey of only using the Huntsman as my main sniper rifle for 30 days. Going into day one, I played it pretty safe with my loadout. I was using the Huntsman, I had the SMG and the Kukri equipped. The standard default loadout, really, except for the Huntsman. And I found that over the first few hours, I was actually getting more kills than I wanted to be with my submachine gun. I was actually hitting a bunch of people with the Huntsman, sure. But then, because I hit them for 120 or whatever, my brain thought it was easier to pull out the SMG and hit those with another bullet to finish off the kill. This was something I needed to revisit later in the challenge because at this rate, I'm not going to get any Huntsman kills whatsoever. But I decided not to change my loadout for a little while and just get used to having the Huntsman on the loadout instead of the sniper rifle. Eventually, later in the challenge, I swapped to the Cozy Camper and the Kukri still just to give me some healing while I was trying to use the Huntsman and to remove the aim knockback when on fire too. I found that loadout much more helpful once my aim was better with the Huntsman. So I didn't really feel like I needed the SMG anymore and it was just sitting there. But to start with on this challenge, the SMG was probably the perfect choice. Now, within the first couple of days, I started to realize pretty quick what my weak areas are with the Huntsman and who was going to be a harder class to take out. I think the most obvious one was definitely like jumpy scouts. You know, those guys that never actually touch the ground and they're constantly moving. They've probably played a season in open kind of thing. Yeah, those guys. Their movement makes it hard to track them and actually get a good shot off with the Huntsman at them, especially because you need to lead them a little bit to actually hit them. Really difficult to deal with. Demos also seem to give me a few problems. Not all of them, but some really competent demos definitely became a problem during a couple of games. For the most part, though, demos were absolutely fine. Hitting them in the head from behind was a little difficult, but we managed it. And the final thing I started noticing straight away that was annoying are other snipers that can use real sniper rifles. 
The range advantage in fights like this was not to be underestimated and it ended up getting me killed quite a lot of times. This was literally the only time in the challenge I wish I could swap to the sniper rifle to actually have a go at them again. But they didn't become an issue too many times over the course of the challenge, but just enough to make me feel like it was worth mentioning it. Obviously, it was easier to kill the snipers if I saw them before they saw me, since most pub snipers basically just end up standing still. But if they saw me first, they have an inherent advantage purely based off the item that is in their hands. So when I knew there was a sniper on the other team, I had to play a little bit sneakier. So really all things considered, there wasn't too much that I'd encounter each game that was going to become a huge problem for me or the way I like to play sniper. Really good demos were fairly rare. Snipers that were actually really good were also fairly rare. And these jumping scouts were more common, but we learned to deal with them. After day one ended, I was sitting on a pretty decent amount of kills, which made me think that maybe I could blow the 1000 kill goal I had set myself out of the water. However, one thing I knew was going to let me down was my actual ability to play TF2 for a good amount of time every single day for a month. I decided to start this challenge at a horrible time when it came to commitments I had outside of playing video games. I was getting ready to move house at the time. I was away for a week for my girlfriend's birthday, which was amazing. I literally took my Steam Deck hoping I would try and get a few kills, but the internet was just terrible, so I couldn't even connect. There was also, you know, that little matter of going to work every day and trying to still create other content and stream other stuff at the same time. All excuses I know, and if YouTube was still my job or whatever, then the consistency would have been so much easier. But I think even with all of those weak excuses, I did all right. And all of that goes to say, I didn't raise the kill goal. It's still a thousand. And also, it, this is the first time I've ever made a video like this. And because it happened so long ago and the notes I took were non-existent, I don't necessarily remember how each day went, which is really, really bad. Or how good I felt after each session, which would have been quite useful to know. But what I do know from this whole month is that there wasn't really a single moment that I was annoyed that I was using the Huntsman. And I actually found really quickly that I loved the way I could play while this weapon was equipped. I really enjoyed the way I can get in people's faces with this weapon. I could play Sniper in a way I really enjoyed playing him and it actually worked out a lot better. I feel like I'm quite an aggressive player in TF2. I jump into enemies, do damage, hopefully get kills. And if I get out, cool. And if I don't, is what it is. And the Huntsman seems to facilitate that kind of play style fairly well, once you're used to it, obviously. I definitely found myself in a bunch of situations that a sniper should absolutely never be in, but I actually thrived in them. Obviously, there would be games where that just didn't work, like, at all, and you spend most of your time watching other people play TF2 while you're respawning. I noticed a lot throughout this challenge that if I hit a nice shot on someone, like maybe one that could be considered a lucky shot or look a bit weird on the enemy side, a lot of people ended up swapping to sniper and using the huntsman against me to try and get some kind of revenge. Yes, yeah, so we've got an air shot already. <laughs> Does that count as another air shot? I'm, I'm down to count it. He was in the air. Oh my god, the other guy swapped to Huntsman as well. I've made the other two snipers swap. <laughs> They've both gone Huntsman. It was interesting to see, and I've only ever really seen people do this against me when I use items like the soda popper and things like that. So you knew I had tilted somebody when you saw they swapped directly to Huntsman Sniper to try and kill me back. It didn't stop being funny the entire month. All right, listen, I know the reputation that the Huntsman has. Being a weapon that requires no skill to use and getting good with this weapon is just getting lucky. But I'll be honest, there is some truth to that for sure. There's so many kills I got throughout the 30 days that realistically should have never been kills and always should have been an arrow flying past somebody's face. And I get that, but I don't really think that the Huntsman was as luck-based as people say it is. Actually, aiming in the general direction of somebody does seem to help and actually aiming at head level instead of purely for body shots also helps those arrows actually become headshots there is a little bit of look with this weapon like i said for sure but there is actually some tech to using it that you need to learn how to use and potentially make work to your advantage in games i really couldn't hit headshots on the first day which is why i used the smg but once i started getting more used to the way the weapon fires where the arrows are going to go i started to get a bit better understanding about the lead times when people are moving the headshots started flying in. 
Due to the nature of the weapon, there were so many moments that I absolutely loved during this challenge. If I was facing a big group of enemies or trying to stop a push or something similar, there were a few times where I had no idea who the enemy I just killed was since I was just aiming into a group. And having to try and peek the group again to see who died was something I just found pretty funny while playing. There were so many times where there were multiple enemies on my screen and I was fighting one of them. And instead of hitting and killing the guy who was actually shooting at me, my arrow would sail past them and hit somebody who had nothing to do with the fight I was in at all. And it would kill them. And then I would die because I didn't hit the person who was actually shooting me. And in moments like that, I found it really difficult to be mad at the game because I found that funny every time. Like, I've died because my arrow sailed past somebody and gone into somebody else's head who had nothing to do with the fight, wasn't involved in the slightest, and was just trying to get out of spawn. And this challenge really brought me back to when I first started TF2, and it felt like nothing that happened in the game really mattered. I was just playing and having fun, which with the way TF2 has been in the last couple of years and the amount of stuff all of the players have had to put up with, I think I needed this way, way more than I ever thought I did. I genuinely just really loved this challenge and it felt like I was new to TF2 again, but better at the game. So you know how I said before that I didn't exactly remember how each day went? There's one day I do remember, day 22. So I think it's about time to tell you why day 22 was so incredible. Out of all of the goals I had set myself for this challenge, I had done quite a lot of them already by this point. I'd headshot an invisible spy the day before. Oh. I'd got what I call insane distance kills on day 5 and 19. I'd got multiple 10 kill streaks over my time playing, but on day 22, I literally completed every single goal I had set myself for this challenge. I crossed over the line of a thousand kills, which felt absolutely huge, considering I thought I'd spend a lot more of this challenge missing shots. And, you know, since I was on a little bit of a roll, I decided to try and 360 headshot someone. And I actually got it after a couple of attempts, which felt amazing. I managed to get a taunt kill, an insane distance kill, and ended it all off with a 10 kill streak. So that's literally every single goal I had set for the challenge, all done in one day. So a few quick little things as well that I noticed about this month. I played a lot of Harvest and Banana Bay over these 30 days, and those maps seem to be perfect for the Huntsman. You have like a deathmatch-like space to run around in, different angles to attack from, you can get into places you're not supposed to be, and generally, it's pretty easy to run a muck on that map and cause a little bit of chaos. Like the Huntsman, and listen, I know I've already said this, but it was a very, very fun weapon to use. It really was. I'd recommend this weapon to anyone to try out, and the challenge was way more fun and a lot more pleasant than I initially thought it was going to be. Frontier was another map that came up a fair bit, which was nice to try and get used to fighting with the Huntsman from a distance a lot of the time, since there's so many long stretches of space on that map. And I definitely got myself a nice couple of kills from playing on it. At the start of this video, I mentioned that at some point in the challenge, I swapped to the Cozy Camper. And I'll be real, I genuinely think that this was a huge turning point in the challenge for me. Not having aim punch from fire was an absolute game changer when dealing with close-up pyros. And the healing you get from it, while not huge, is enough to save you in certain situations and really aid in your survivability when you're just roaming about a map. There were countless times that I could hide in a corner for a little bit and gain some health back because of that weapon and not risk running for a health pack and being seen and most likely dying. I'd definitely say that as soon as my aim was good enough with the Huntsman to hit heads that I basically stopped using the SMG entirely. Now, this wasn't the only weapon combo I tried out. I did actually try pairing the Huntsman with the Jurati Bushwhacker combo, but I just didn't really like it all that much with the Huntsman. If I was fighting somebody close range, I wouldn't want to have to put away the Huntsman swap to the Jurati, throw it at someone, then swap to the Bushwhacker and then kill them. I'd much rather just try and hit them in the head with a close range arrow. While that combination of weapons wasn't necessarily for me, that set might work a little bit better for other players. That was about as far as I got with the experimenting on my loadouts because Sniper doesn't have a whole load of weapons and I don't think any other options really were ever going to top the Cozy Camper for me. There is actually a feature of the Huntsman that I haven't mentioned yet, and it's an underrated feature for sure, but it's where pyros can light your arrows on fire. And genuinely, when I first started this challenge, I knew about it, but I thought initially it wouldn't actually do anything throughout the whole challenge. But as it turns out, this feature is really, really cool. 
So, for example, a pyro could light your arrow on fire and you could hit, say, a scout with a regular shot for like 120 damage. And a tick or two later, that scout would die for being on fire, which is so cool. Especially when I swapped off the SMG, being able to finish kills you would have otherwise not got because the pyro lights your arrow is absolutely invaluable. So, please, if you are a pyro and you see your teammate using the huntsman, why the arrows on fire? They'd get so many more kills that help the team out if you do that. And most of the time you're hitting these classes and setting them on fire, they're so far away from a health pack that they can't get there in the couple of ticks it takes for the fire to kill them. It's a ridiculously good feature that I massively underestimated going into this challenge, but one I actually found to really love throughout the 30 days. By the end of the 30 days, I felt super confident jumping into any server and being able to do at least a little bit of work with the Huntsman. And I still feel fairly confident even using it now after not using it as much since the challenge ended at the start of December. At the end of the 30 days, this is what the stats of the Huntsman look like. Genuinely so much better than I ever assumed they would be. So I'm proud of myself for that. If I was obviously playing this game every day, all day as my job and really, really going for it, I'm sure the stats on this thing would have been much more impressive and even insane in some cases. But for the amount I was able to play, I'm happy with what I've achieved and I did what I wanted to do with the weapon and then some. So for me, this is a win. I do think 30 days for me right now for challenges like this is a little bit too long. While I didn't feel limited too much in this challenge, 30 days is a big commitment for me. So if I was to do this kind of thing again, I would cut it down to seven days, I think. It's a lot more manageable. It's a lot easier. So I think that's what we're going to do from now on. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave the video a like rating. It would really make me happy. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.